Hey guys, welcome back to the Mind Mate podcast. Um, so one of the things I'm really trying to build here with this thing is um, complete and utter authenticity. And that doesn't just have to be related to mental health. Um, it can be related to anything in life, but just that pure honesty because it's the best way to grow the self and it's the best way to become really responsible. It's the best way to, um, you know, to really set a foundation for, uh, for improvement, for self-growth, like I said. Um, a couple of months ago, uh, I was doing a podcast on the Adventure Fit Radio podcast and we had Alex De- uh, Deacon, who, now he'll kill me for saying that, it's either Deacon or Deacon, but I'm going to go with Deacon. <laughs> and um, uh, we, we had him on the show and it was only until five minutes into the show that um, we, or that I found out really, that um, he actually had a, 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 big, a big fear of public speaking or, or self-expression and that actually led to a, a panic attack um, on that show. And it was actually quite an amazing experience because for, for me, like I was probably, you know, slightly insecure at the time. I was like, this big fucking dude coming up to the show. I was like, man, this guy's going to be super intimidating and all this sort of stuff. But it's just amazing how that, um, you know, that, that classic um, reactive egotistical judgment um, type mechanism that we have in our brain can just be so incorrect all the time, you know. Um, but... What followed on from that was an amazing conversation between Alex, myself, Hamo, who was also on the show, and Bill, um, just about you know about the way anxiety manifests itself in, in different people's uh, realities and and um, and how weird and bizarre it can be. How how it's you know um, it's a it's a it's an evolutionary mechanism that's that's kept us alive for a long time, but it's also very irrational in this day and age. You know, um, this video. So this is if you're listening to this, this is obviously on audio. Um, so you'll be you'll be able to listen to how that all came about, including Alex's panic attack and all that sort of stuff. But um, if you're watching this, uh, shortly after this video, you're going to see um, the way how it all came about. So if you are listening to this, guys, I strongly urge you to jump onto my YouTube channel, just Tom Ahern. Um, you can look it up on the Mind Mates podcast playlist, and um, you can have a look at um, Alex Deacon's uh, panic attack there, which is he's uh, he's given us um, the all clear to look at um, and and view because it's um, it, yeah it's really quite inspiring for him to actually be so honest with this. Um, it actually reminds me a lot of Dan Harris's uh, on, on air pan, uh, panic attack, which if you if you've read his book Ten Percent Happier um, or you follow his meditation classes and stuff, you know um, very well who who he is there. But um. Yeah, um, I guess what I'm going to do with this is we'll run the, the 20 minutes of dialogue-ish between myself, Bill, Hamo, and Alex, including the initial panic attack, um, and then the talk about mental health, um, and then we're just going to run the uh, the other podcast right into that um, that uh, Alex and I actually did together, uh, which is a new podcast where we actually sat down and spoke kind of about that time, and we also spoke um, about a, a great deal of, uh, of different topics as well. So I really hope you enjoy... Uh, yeah, watching and listening to this, and um, yeah, it was it's really interesting. So enjoy. The pale blue dot. All right, here we go. <clears throat> here we see Alex molesting a barbell. <laughs> He loves it so on the low, I think he's got an obsession. A rig like Thor. Yeah, this dude is ripped to shreds. And my friend, I want to know how many live goats do you eat a day? <laughs> Cause you're so strong and I wanna be like you. And Bill's the same, he's fucked the words up for me. Hey, we'll start again. Uh, and Bill's the where the fuck did you get me to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where are we? Yeah, we keep yeah. going, keep going. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Cause you're so strong and I wanna be like you. And Bill's the same, he's told me he has a wank or two. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, it's never been in a sexual way. There's only one thing to say, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so 
you want to talk a bit of training and, 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 uh, and stuff, obviously. Deeks, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and, uh, and your training and what you're up to and stuff like that. Um, well, sorry, tough start. <laughs> Go! <laughs> I'm currently training for the GPC Nationals yeah. in June, so... Um, <laughs> Just give me a sec here. Yeah, no <laughs> Yeah, alright. Well, I was getting nervous. Yeah, I just had like, I just had like fucking mad anxiety. Yeah, it's all yeah. good. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> yeah, we'll just chill out for a second. Yeah. Sorry. Um, hey, no worries. What should we do? Should we just, uh, we'll just chill out. Yeah, you can chill for a minute. Yeah, we've got plenty of yeah. time so we can yeah. do, we can just do technical difficulties. Yeah, sorry man. I just like, <laughs> yeah. I've, been, I've been like fucking just like fighting like a panic attack. You know? Oh, really? Like, yeah, man. I'm oh, just like, bro, we don't have to oh, record. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, oh, yeah, I was like, really, just like, yeah. Oh, bro, you should have told me. Yeah, yeah, sure. You should have told me. We don't, we don't want to have any stress. Nah. There's no stress nah, to be attached sure, to this man. shit. Don't worry about it. Yeah. And you know, like, I mean, we've all been through it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Time, time. I was, I was sort of exactly like thinking like, I could dude. like get through it and then we could like talk about yeah. that stuff. But like, yeah. fuck, man. You just like. Yeah, yeah. that's just chill. Yeah. For sure. Sweet. Oh, what a bummer, man. Yeah, sorry, man. It's actually good because it'll, it'll like, hopefully if we can do it next time, we just like. We'll make sure that we don't ruin the trivia like that. <laughs> 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 oh man, that's classic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what's been yeah. going on, Dex? You still getting your talent? Yeah, I don't know. Just involved? like just had like a lot like going on, just like with just like personal life and stuff. Like it's all like good, yeah. but it's just like so much like change. I don't know if like yeah. ever had to be like so like independent before. So it's yeah. just like no, actually, yeah. Tell me about you. yeah, that's just like small part of it, but like yeah, yeah it's just. I've always just been able to like hide behind some things, but yeah. now it's just like like I'm being me, and so like the idea of like coming on to like something like this and like talking like as me, I just like yeah, like yeah. I know you like talk about it, like like you've yeah, had, like man. like panic attacks and stuff. Oh, like I've had yeah, they're shock. I like do, don't want to make this about me at all, mm. but like if it helps at all, like I mean panic attacks, mate. I've, you can't, you can't, um, you just can't talk. Like, yeah, can't, that's, that's exactly, can't. that's exactly what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's literally what yeah. happens, you know. I remember I had one in front of 35 people when I was giving a debrief at um, CrossFit Richmond. Mm. And it was so embarrassing, because I was yeah. just like, oh fuck, like, I don't know, all the thoughts, all the thoughts you tell yourself and all the shit that's going on, you feel like you're fucking dying, you know. Yeah, yeah. But it's weird at the same time, because then you talk to other people and they're like, oh man, you just had too many coffees. I'm like, what? Yeah. I was dying inside. Yeah. Yeah. Are you fucking yeah. kidding me? Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. a funny one, yeah. Especially, yeah, I noticed it more and more, more like when the volatility of life happens because you, you don't you don't have any like, oh, sweet, I've just got to have to place in the moment. You know? yeah, 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 it just yeah. feeds into other shit as well, man, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I remember, um, I told you about this, this one, Tommy. Uh, this was not, um, I don't know if I've told you about this, maybe I have. When I was, um, <coughs> when I was with Jill still and I was really struggling, I had, um, I had this day where I was just looking at Instagram. I came home, I was tired as fuck. I was just looking at Instagram for like two hours on this couch we were house, uh, house, we're house sitting. And Jill was out having drinks and like the boozy brunch with her mates. And I was like, she was supposed to come home at five. And we were supposed to have an adventure party, birthday party that night. Mm. And um, <coughs> we just spoke about this. Have you spoken about this on the podcast? podcast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and and, uh, and I was like, Jill was due home and I'm like, she was late though. And I was like, oh, I don't want to come back with anybody. Like I was just feeling yeah. shit. I don't want to come back to anybody. I, can't, I don't want to talk to anybody right now. I'm just stressing out. And then I heard her at the door, the gate open. It was her and Connie. And like, Jill's up and about. Like, she's an up and about person. And Connie and her, like, they were just laughing and carrying on, having a great time. Mm. And I fucking jumped to my feet, grabbed my shit that I had next to me, went to grab my bag on the way. This is so they didn't know that I was there. Yeah. Went to grab my bag on the way, missed my bag, but just sprinted up. The, like, I had no control over this. I sprinted up the yeah. stairs and locked myself in this room. Jill's like, man. Like yelling out, I was up in the bedroom, just like fucking, like trying not to fucking breathe terribly so they wouldn't know that I was here. And then, yeah, it was like I've only had two panic attacks really. I had mm. one at Frey's Frey's wedding, but and then I had that one. It's, it's it is funny because you just you're like, how come I can't control my body and my mind? Yeah, right now? Like, I have no control over anything. Mm. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Mm. I've had like one full blown one where because I, I just like didn't know what was going on. Yeah. And then yeah, I've had like plenty of times just like that where it's just like like that and I'm like slow down having to stop. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. You can't you just can't go on. Yeah. Like um have you read Ten Percent Happier by Dan Harris? I've got it. Yeah. I haven't read it. Have you, have you <laughs> seen it? <laughs> <laughs> Mate, like, have you, look at this. Have you got you got your shit on this, don't you? 
Yeah, 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 yeah. I, yeah. I, I watched it before. I, I started reading it. Yeah. So I watched it before. Yeah. yeah. I just thought it was, um, like, it's the best thing that ever happened to him, having that panic attack online. It was just like, he had to unravel some things in his life and shit, you know? Like, you know, but ultimately, man, panic attacks, like, don't make any sense, you know? Like, your body's just shutting down because it thinks that you're in massive danger. It's yeah. classic. Yeah. My biggest panic attack was when I was fucking um, at Frey's wedding, my best mate's wedding. Mm-hmm. And on the pool party day, the day after the wedding, I locked myself in the, in the, um, in the, in the pool room. And I was like, no. No. Yeah. Have you had yeah. one? Have you had one? Have? I've had like, like, I've found that meditation has helped me heaps in my job. Because I, I get really stressed out in my job. Yeah. Like it's very stressful, and I've had some pretty like close calls where yeah. I've just been like, oh, like, like to the point where I'm like, I've got to do something. Yeah. And I've just been like, do you know what? I'm gonna fucking stop what I'm doing, take ten minutes, and you know, sit in the car yeah. and just meditate. And like yeah. that. It's like that is like chat like I was I called everyone and they're like, What the fuck am I supposed to do? What am I gonna do? What yeah. I, like and I'm just like I'm not doing this. Yeah. Just, you know, I'm just, like, oh, just chill out for a bit. Like yeah. yeah, some real like points where like I had like a bloke like cut his tops of his fingers off at work oh, yeah. under like you know, in working under me I'm like, you know, stressed out, I'm not yeah. there, I'm not even at the fucking job and I'm like, what am I supposed to do? Like just, no, just with his other ones off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I was like, it's symmetry. Yeah. Knobs again. Anyway, mate. Yeah. There you go, ah. Tim. Yeah. No, not to that, like, same extent. Like, to where I can't. I mean, I don't. Yeah. I, I never really like talking. I don't really know. Yeah. That's, that's me, my biggest fear. Yeah. Being, like, put, like, on the spot. Mm. And mm. then... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It's like sure. Yeah. Like public speaking and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And even just like friend, and like, even just like someone asking me a question and I know that I'm like like being videoed and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. I would find it very hard to like switch off that. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I'm the same to a degree I was for sure. Well, it was definitely at the start and I was uh, when we turned the mic on I'm like we were super freaking out. And first? I'm still I'm still like, pretty shit in front of yeah, but I'm a lot more comfortable now. This is alright because it's a conversation. If I'm like front of camera stuff, I freak out. But and like, you're like, I'll be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm always like looking away and it's just weird. Yeah. It's just a weird concept. Yeah. Some first, people, um, you're normal. You're always, you're pretty normal. Have you found that you're getting more hits from YouTube or is it like, is it like, nah. do you find that just like some of them? It's just another media podcast. stream. Yeah. Yeah, like we don't really, it's more the audio. Yeah. Yeah, no, we just. I mean, I haven't had time to try and hack our YouTube account. I don't know how to, uh, but I will. We've got a stick start on that social oh, media next week. Yeah. Uh, but we're just like, we're just building, like, eventually it's not going anywhere. We're going to have a thousand cool videos in three years' time. We'll yeah. have a bunch of people watching it. And, you know, it's yeah. cool. We haven't really used I'm it more, to the best way. I'm doing. more wondering if it's like, if you just do, do like, it, it, has, it, has it changed much from like, just doing podcasts? Like, is there, Adding the audio, adding the video. Yeah. Um, by the way, we've Have way you guys found it better, or is it like? Oh, I don't find it any different, really. We don't. I don't, I don't feel like we've been any different. No. We just turn them on. And I feel lucky though. I've, I've never had an issue with. It's never changed. Do you mean like it, has it changed? Has it changed the dynamic? The dynamic yeah. Has it changed the way oh, you guys know. like the what, what you talk about it or how you act or, or just like the way we sit. Uh, right, yeah, yeah. We're never naked anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. No, I don't really feel like it. I feel like it's pretty. Like I've got to. Um, I've got to. On Sunday, I've got a key to get in here. I can come out and get some videos. But um, I've got to. Ca- I've got to come in and film some videos. And like a lot of it's like, I'm Bill Kerr. Like um, this is how we're gonna do like it's um, stuff for like some courses we're doing for like heart, heart shit and shit like that. And um, I've got to. I hate that shit. Mm. That makes me real, real uncomfortable. Like the stuff you do, all that like yeah. face camera, like talking. And, yeah. Like that shit could not make me more you know? But the, the reason I do it, like, partly is because it's so therapeutic for me. Like, yeah. honestly, man, like, you know, you saying even just the word panic attack is, like, super therapeutic for me, you know, because, like, I mean, I'm out of it now, but I was there wholeheartedly, you know, yeah. you listen to me say that shit, you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. it's... Who hasn't listened to any 
Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you've never heard me say it. I've explained it to him. I've heard how you talk about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Oh, classic. Yeah, no, but like, it's just so, um, because, you know, I, I value it so much. So it's, it's very, um, you know, there's an element of like um, self indulgence with it. You know, it's not just like, oh, I'm Tom, and like, I'm really comfortable doing this. It's like, I'm Tom, and like, I'm. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. Know? That's great. Yeah. The more, the more I can just say words like anxiety, OCD, panic attacks, shit like that. The more I can just get used to them, and yeah, 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 okay. yeah. So just always normalize them, you know. And like, yeah. you know that. I mean, I remember I had this conversation with a mate of mine, say, <clears throat> and we were all, <clears throat> we were all um, just sitting at my mate's um, barbecue. There was like twenty of us, just all lads, um, and you hear conversations like. Well, you know, just classic boy sort of thing. Yeah. And um, we started getting into a talk because he, he was asking me about my book. And he was like, oh man, you know, I wanted to pick your brain about like some of the anxiety and shit that you've had in the past. And I was like, yeah, sure, like this is you know, fine. And um, it's like, at the very end, I said nothing weird, you know, I just said my experiences. And he said, what the fuck? Like, I can't believe like, you know, you, you have like, you know, you have felt like what I'm feeling. Like, I thought it was the only one. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, I've individually spoken with every motherfucker here about this shit. Like, every single human being in the world, you know? Yeah. We have to. We wouldn't be alive today, you know? Because we need to know when danger's lurking. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, just yeah. fucked in the modern world yeah. because we don't have to fend for ourselves as much anymore, you know? But it's just so, like, you know, to even to normalise something, it's like, you can't not normalise anxiety. Like, we've all had fears, you know? It's just, that's what happens. Yeah. I mean, it's me that even as much as like, even in like the group, like all the those boys like Dono and, and like we're everybody else is like seeing somebody and like doing, and they're right. we're all like fucking like they're not. Yeah, I was pretty surprised by that actually. Yeah, it's, they, that's exactly like Jono and stuff like they were like hyper and stuff. Yeah, mm. but then and now like, like it's it's open like, like, yeah. yeah, so For it's sure. it's opening up that conversation as well, and and normal. Yeah. It shouldn't be a thing that's hard. Probably something I don't talk about enough because the first time Bill asked me, I was like, I was like, no, sorry, man, I'm just like, in the headspace. Then the second time, I was like, I said no. Like, once uh, I'll, he's getting like, I'll, I'll just do it. I'll just yeah. like, you know, yeah. fucking just like get over it or whatever. But yeah. like, obviously, I wasn't ready. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I never get over it. It's not my kid. Bill made it worse. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's not even that I'm like having that much of a shit time. I think it's just that this thing in particular, like speaking from people, is, is, is what it's just it's come up more lately. Yeah. Because like at uh, the novice comp, that was the last one that we had, and it was like out of nowhere, it's like, why well, I don't want you to get up and like do like introduce the novice and just all that. Yeah. And I was just like, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then and then he's and he the way he words, he's just like, just get up and do it. Yeah, just yeah. go do it. You're doing the next one. You have to do the next one. Just like, and I'll try and explain to him, I'm like, look, it's like, it's like, it's going to try and work through a bit, but yeah, you can't really just push me on it. And then he just yeah. uses himself as, as an example. He's like, yeah. oh, I was nervous. You just got to do it. Yeah. You are not me. And so I've like felt this like pressure with it. Yeah, so yeah, then yeah. like, yeah, it's been yeah. like, so a, that's why I stopped doing our Toastmasters. I really wanted to get better at public speaking, so I started doing Toastmasters. Yeah. And the way that they do it, I feel like the hardest thing for me with with public speaking was speaking your own thoughts. Yeah. Like if I if I had something prepared and you got me to stand up, I'd feel a lot better than if you stand up and they ask you a question and you got to fucking just talk in front of people about you. You got to yeah, you got to make it's your own thoughts, but like you're just freezing that scenario. Because when I started doing Toastmasters, you don't do any prepared speeches until like a few weeks in or whatever. It gives you time to do it, obviously. But yeah. the first thing they get you to do is. You jump into um, like random questions. They pick a topic. The topic was the Australian Open. It's like 15 months ago, and they're like, "Oh yeah, Bill," um, and you got to randomly stand up. And they're like, "Oh, the question was, um, where they go, uh, what do you feel? Oh, that the the, the Australian Open average uh, average match game ends at uh, 2 a.m. this year. What do you think about the effect on young families being able to take their kids to a high a high quality game of tennis? If 
they're going for 2 8. That was a question, and I'm standing there. And I was like, uh, no worries, uh, just give me a second there. And then, and then I said, oh shit, I'm nervous here, guys. <laughs> and, then, and then I said, oh, I'm real nervous. And then I went, oh, I'm going to sit down, I'll do better next time. <laughs> and then, you know, just sat right down. But I was like, so embarrassed, I was fucking sweating like a yeah. instantly, like just fucking. But the whole thought of Toastmasters just freaked me out so much, I just stopped doing it. I was yeah. like, too much stress for my. I had heaps of adventure stress. I'm like, it's a very positive thing that I'm trying to work through and get better at, but I just don't want this stress right now. You know? So I just stopped doing it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I, I, I probably spoke the other day, the <laughs> first time, um, first time, and I was fucking like, peaking really hard. Got through it alright, so feel better about about it now. You know, obviously, my grass was but yeah. Stress you know is, it is not, 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 not worth it to stress out. Stress is. Stress is Avoid it, we should avoid it at all costs, I believe. You know what I mean? Something stressing me out. I mean, you can work through stuff again, and put, put, but like, yeah. It depends. Like, you know, to help you out, there'd be people that would be panicking to get to the bottom of you about the thought of getting under the carpet. Like, yeah. way worse. You know, like, they'd be like, fuck, don't even want to set into a gym, you know. And they're just feeling the same shit, you know. Like, I, I still get um, nervous in front of a crowd. Because you know, CrossFit coaching, um, you know, like you have to do a break. Yeah, like um, most Sundays now we've had 30 plus people. And um, so in 2016 it was, uh, my anxiety was getting a lot better. Like a lot of the OCD was going away. And I got in front of a crowd and I'd prepped for real shit. Like I'd, I'd done a bunch of gear like the night before. Came in Sunday morning, fucking like real hungover. And just thought I'd get, you know, I'd never had an issue with it. Um, but my generalized anxiety level was such that, like, if something wasn't right, I'd have a panic attack there. Like, I'm like, like what you're saying, right? So, your life situation at the moment is like, as such, to a point where your generalized anxiety level, because we all have anxiety levels, is probably at a point where it could get tipped over the edge a little bit easier. Yeah. Um, and so, when something like this happens, there yeah, could be that fall. That's exactly where right <coughs> I was then. And um, I got it that, and then I, you know, turned around, had a little, it's like, okay, I swear, I'll be able to say that. And I looked and there's like 35 people staring back at me. And I was like, oh, fuck. Okay. And then I started talking, and exactly what you just did, man, like 30 seconds in, I started like being unable to talk, you know? And it's like, oh, shit. And then I fucking failed at it, and I was like, oh, damn, jokes, you can jump in and do the rest for me, you know? And the amazing thing about this stuff is like, anxiety is, is extremely habitual. So, like, and it will remember all that shit straight away. So it's like, okay, if, if you. If your amygdala thinks that you're in danger at 30 seconds into this debrief, every time you're 30 seconds in, the next time you speak, you'll start to get that feeling. And even to this day, man, 30 seconds into a talk, I get a little bit of a feeling like, oh fuck, because it thinks that I'm gonna die, you know? Yeah. So that's what it does. Um, but, you know, that, like, when you're ready, you know, and you know, you feel like comfortable with just observing it, you know, you can start to like push that boundary a little bit because, um, it'll start to go, okay, so he's, he's not spoken here, like, I didn't public speak, okay, so I was right, like, danger is there, so I'm gonna make sure that I've set up a protective barrier, so the next time that happens, like, I know what to do, you know, because yeah. it thinks it's right, yeah. you know, and it's fucking right, yeah. you know, yeah. um, like, we don't have any guns, <laughs> you yeah. know, so that's what it does, so, like, what, but what I found as well, would I would always try to lean on, like, any crutch I could, so the first time I public spoke after that, in front of the crowd, um, I made sure like the background noise was up a little bit and the music so just drowned out a little bit, like any crutch. Yeah. But then I'd do it and I'd be happy, you know, and then I'd be like, oh fuck, you know, but I used the crutch, you know? So, you know, with hindsight, this stuff is the best because like facing these sorts of fears for personal development is just so important. And mate, no shit, one day you'll be a fucking phenomenal public speaker, 100%. You know, we all will if, if that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. But um, it's it's coming into that recognizing thing, and you can actually use it against it. So people think that I'm weird because I train, um, or I train, I just keep moving. <laughs> I get under a barbell like once a month. <laughs> I train in complete silence. Yeah. And they're like, why do you do that, man? It's so hardcore. I'm like, nah, I'm doing it because I'm, I'm scared of the silence, you know? But I make sure that I'm so used to the silence so that when I get up there and talk to the people, I use that yeah. so I feel more comfortable with it. Yeah. And there's tons of things you can do, man. There's like, meditation apps that are solely for public speaking. Um, there's like simulations on YouTube that like, they have like a, 
360 degree rotation of public speaking. Um, Visualisation is really good, just like, you know, imagining yourself in front of everyone. And um, this is what I reckon Barry McDonald's Dare um, is a really great audio book to listen to, or it's an app you can download. And it, um, he does some specific stuff for panic attacks because public speaking fear is the most common fear in the whole world. Yeah. In the whole world, more yeah. than dying. You know, like <laughs> everyone experiences that. Okay. Yeah. More than dying, people are afraid of talking to a crowd. You know? And there's <laughs> rather dying. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah. But the panic, you know, like it thinks that you are dying. And the reason it's there, I've said this on the show before, but the reason it's there is because it's a, you know, an evolutionary ingrained emotion. And when you um, stand away from the crowd in evolutionary times, you're facing potential rejection from your social tribe. If they reject you, then you're on your own to fend for yourself. So it's like, hey, Stay with the group, stay with the group, because if you don't, then you could be on the road to fend yourself yeah. in the wild, that meant danger. Yeah. So there's a reason why we are afraid of that shit, you know? But at the same time, man, like, it's so powerful to get up there and, like, move someone. You know? It's important for us to get good at that, I feel. So, yeah. um, but man, like, best advice I can give is, like, and I use it, I'll use it for the rest of my life, because I still have had these panic attacks, you know? Um, is the Barry McDonough thing, where he tells you to, like, switch the thought of oh it's fear to oh it's actually excitement you know yeah yeah because they're fairly like similar like physiological like dude 100 yeah barry's book is hard to find hey barry's book is hard to find it's on audible Did you it's on audible yeah i don't know it's on audible i'm fucking trying i've been trying to bloody buy it for like since you guys since you had it's yeah, online um uh the dare response yeah. the dare response by barry mcdonald yeah it's really good man it's good Cool. So there it was. There was uh, the panic attack and the, and the chat and uh, the tribute there as well. <laughs> and now uh, I bring you the podcast uh, that I did with Alex and I just in uh, in my room here in my house. And um, it was a little bit more subdued. Um, hopefully the audio is a little bit better for you as well. And um, yeah, hope you enjoy this one, guys. So mate, how classic is this? that there's two blokes on a podcast with a fear of public speaking. <laughs> <laughs> We're not doing well. <laughs> oh, shit. Face our fears. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Try to. <laughs> oh. So where did, where did yours come from originally? Because I don't think from chat, I, mean, I don't know that. Yeah. That, uh, yeah. Oh, we'll get pretty deep straight away. Yeah, <laughs> straight away. Take your pants off, mate. We're yeah. going to go right <laughs> Yeah, I guess that, like, um, fear of expression definitely came from like my um well it probably started a little bit earlier yeah um but it started with like my friendship group in high school yes yeah yeah did i talk about that i do remember that yeah, yeah. we had we were having a coffee yeah yeah, yeah. you yeah. paid for it huh? yeah <laughs> yeah so um yeah they just hang on sorry yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's all good um because it's one of those things where I know for me personally, and I was telling you about this as well. Yeah. It's like you have a feeling, and then it's like, oh fuck, it's coming on, and then it's like a perpetual. Yeah. You can't seem to get rid of it, and yeah. it becomes like a, a like, breathing yeah. thing as well. It's like my body's just like, get the fuck out of here. I'm yeah. just going to cloud your mind so you can't even think. Yeah. Exactly. Just get out. Just yeah. use this opportunity. Leave. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You yeah. suck. Yeah. Oh man. For me, it's more the for me, it's more the um, thoughts. Like I don't necessarily get. I don't necessarily get really cloudy with it. Mm-hmm. It's more that I just get kind of, um, I don't know, like maybe it is a little bit of a sense of cloudiness or something, but yeah, some people talk about a public, a public speaking fear or just like any sort of socialising fear. Mm-hmm. And they say that, you know, they get these things and they just can't think about the next thing to say. Yeah. You know, but for me, it's kind of just like, oh, fuck, everyone's looking. Yeah, right. You know? And e- even now, I could probably... focus on, like, the external sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't really get cloudy in a sense, you know? But, I don't know, I often think about the evolutionary side of it. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, the cloudy thing probably makes sense because it's like, well, you know, we're going to stop you thinking about anything now to get you out of the room. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I find it's, like, helpful to sort of, like, thank my body for that. Like, thank you for the warning, but... Oh. I don't need you. Yeah. Like right now. So true. Yeah. Yeah. So is that what you're doing now? Huh? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you get that with other things as well? Because I, I just imagine like, well, because you know, rather than going straight into it, like yeah. I did. Yeah. 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 
you're uh, you're also a very very strong individual. I just imagine if I was walking up to uh, a barbell with that much weight on, I'd be like, I'm getting cloudy right now. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't see. I don't really get that at all. Yeah. I get I get excited. Like it's just like a way to like you know, I don't know, test out my strength or test out yeah, um, you know, my mental strength as well because I know that's right. like my. Um, yeah, where I'm comfortable. Like, yeah. On the, on the platform, like that's my home. That's so, your place. That's yeah. your place. Yeah, we've all got a happy place. Yeah, see, I don't get, um, I don't get nervous like up on, up on stage or anything like that. Yeah, no shit. Because I'm good at lifting. Yeah. <laughs> You're not bad, mate. So, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's just when the mic comes out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I remember, um, I remember there was a time where I was doing the scoring for a CrossFit competition at my old CrossFit gym. And um, I was like, I was just like in the background the whole time. And this was just after the panic attack that I told you about. I think yeah. some of the listeners know. It was like a panic attack um, that I was in front of like 25, 30 um, crossing members or something. And it was the thing where I don't even like to use the word, the, the label panic attack anymore because yeah. like, cool, you know, that's right. But that was just an old me. Yeah. But it was a thing where I'd gone out. I was real pissed from the night before and I just hadn't looked at the board and for some reason it came on. You can never know. There was probably a bit of coke in the system. <laughs> you know, from, from, from Maccas. <laughs> They're doing all sorts of things now. <laughs> but um, but um, it just came about. And so I had this like preluding fear to talk, you know, right at that trigger point of like 30 seconds or so. And um, I was asked to, you know, give out the results to all these people. And even that, it wasn't even like a public speech, but anything where you're in front of a crowd or something. Yeah. Um, and for me, one-on-one's fine. You know, one, one to ten's fine, but it's, a, it's the exact same thing of when I had the last trigger. It's going to go, right, this is the exact same scenario. So here we go, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it'll just go, we're on. And I can feel it coming on. So I just started to speak really quickly. I was like, oh, my first, the first second, third, really sweet. And then everyone's yeah, like, right. what? <laughs> <laughs> so it's random. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. yeah. And someone had to take over for you or Yeah, it wasn't I, I think I managed to get it out. I think yeah. you know, and it's never as bad as what you think it is. Because mm. right, you know, right now you're probably like fucking hell, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're totally not, man. You're talking to a mate, you know. And I, I for for me it was like the exact same thing, you know. It was just one of those things where um in my mind I was like, Did anyone just fucking hear what I said there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And people did, you know. Yeah. So it wasn't the end it wasn't the end of the world. Yeah. It was good. Um, but yeah, anyway, so we'll go back. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, so with my mates, they just, it was just like that classic boys sort of banter. Yeah. That, that just gets, just goes too far. Yeah, for sure. Still, um, it can and, still. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, like, I'm a little bit hesitant talking about it because I'm actually, um, like pretty good mate, well, really good mates with definitely at least a couple of them. Yeah. I'm still like right now. Yeah. Um, but we had to go our separate ways first and sort of, um, do a bit of well, I know I definitely did a lot of like self development. Yeah, and I think, for sure. And I think I definitely encouraged that energy within the group. Mm. Like when I started hanging out with them again, it was mm. just it was definitely a lot different. Mm. So that's like really awesome now. But Massively. back then it was like it's like I'm nearly twenty seven now, and it was ten years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, I was always just the butt of the joke. Yeah. Um, like any time, I was pretty much conditioned to think any time I was gonna open my mouth, I was gonna be ridiculed. Yeah. So anytime, you know, it, I still just have that now. Yeah. It's like, I just like, don't want to say anything stupid. I don't want to look awkward. I, you know, I don't want to be like that, you know, Alex, the quiet guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it makes a lot of sense. And you know what? Cause you know, I, I went to an all boys school and I probably had, I had absolutely had mates like that as well. And you know, one, if you pointed the finger that someone is three pointing back and yeah, yeah, I can absolutely say that, you know, I was probably doing some of that stuff as well mm. just to fit in because yeah. I had no fucking idea who I was and what I, and what it meant to, you know, try to be a good person. So yeah. I was just totally focused in what my friends were doing yeah. and they were probably focusing on what I was doing, mm. you know? So it's very hard to say, I mean, that's actually fucking awesome from you to actually be like, Hey, like I've just got to work on myself here and do what I need to do and find myself a little bit more you know, at that age, because for me, it would have been just like giving, giving people shit, you know, because people, everyone was doing it and I just didn't have, I lacked that self-awareness, you know? Yeah. Um, so I guess my coping mechanism 
was much more centered in trying to be a sheep like everyone else yeah. as opposed to you being like hey you know and you probably wouldn't have done it explicitly you want to be like you guys are all very mean yeah. i'm gonna go over here and meditate <laughs> <laughs> well the, th- the thing was like for the, for the first like couple of years like i would try i'd try, try and give it back but i was just yeah like, i'm just not that witty you know? <laughs> yeah. i'm just like <laughs> i could just never come up with something that good and it always just come back on me <laughs> yeah. oh that's classic yeah I'd be like, Shh, what so that kind of make, make me, mechanism didn't work <laughs> oh that's cool so then after a while like after just like talking like my mum's a great support so i'd like talk to my mum about it mm. and then she'd be like oh well you know you might need to like find a new group of, group of friends that they're not going to be understanding. Yeah. And, um, and then it was just a slow process from there. Like, um, like finding a new group of mates and yeah. stuff like that. So, yeah. so was it, yeah. So talk us through that slow process. Like, well, I guess when, when did you notice that it became a, a really big issue? You know? Um, uh, probably when, uh, well, okay, so, like, probably when we, like, started, like, using drugs and stuff like that. Yeah. And that was just, like, a, um, anything I was feeling was just, it was, being, like, being plugged into to an amplifier, you know? Yeah. Like, this, that anxiety I had was, like, really being brought out. Yeah. Um, and then, like, so I thought that was more the problem at the time. True. Um, but it was just really, not that it wasn't, but, like, mm. it was just, like, bringing up all the other stuff that I... That, that I pushed down so yeah yeah and then um yeah and then eventually like I ended up seeing like a psychotherapist mm. and, and working through it mm. which was like being life-changing yeah for sure yeah, it's amazing it's know? good isn't it yeah it's amazing to think that um I don't know I, I look at psych psychology and psychotherapy and I honestly don't really know the difference there mm. <laughs> something psycho yeah. you know it's all the same movie <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um just like an absolute game changer and mm. I was so hesitant um, before before leading into it, you know, but mm. man, I, it's, it's so so worthwhile to pay to have an open an open chat, you know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think the difference for me, so the psycho like a psychologist will give you like strategies to oh, to yeah. deal with like certain situations, mm. whereas the psychotherapist that I saw and still see, it's more of a life coach now, which is cool. Like the role has changed. Yeah. Um, it's more of like, oh, I'm gonna point out all these things which I didn't really get at the time Mm. but now I understand he was just making me self aware Mm. Um, Mm. and then all these things are like bubbled to the surface and you just you sort of you have to deal with them yeah otherwise you break yeah (laughs) because it's just like all at the surface now yes Um, and he sort of yeah just um, yeah it's crazy yeah that's good yeah that's good gives you the tools without you really knowing yeah yeah or like makes you aware that there are these things you need to pick up Mm -hmm. to sort it out yeah Yeah. so what were some of them um, okay, so I, so I had a girlfriend at the time and like one of the biggest things was I was just really like, um, reliant on, reliant on her in just like so many different ways. Yeah. Just, yeah. Like, like little ways, like didn't know how to use a washing machine, <laughs> that, like wouldn't like, that's would, still me, man. Would, <laughs> would never like, uh, like if we were looking for like a place to rent or something, I would never be in charge of that because I just was <laughs> not... Yeah. that much of an adult she was three years younger than me as well true and yeah I just like couldn't handle things <laughs> yeah. like that you know there's no barbell associated with it <laughs> yeah but we um I can't think of any more examples but it's all comes down to that fear of expression I don't want I didn't want to like express myself like in a way to like go and um you know, take charge of mm. those things in case I'm, uh, I mucked it up. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. Um, one of the biggest things going back is that um, because I do go cloudy, um, people take that as like, um, oh, Alex just like isn't capable. I'm going to take over and do things for him. So my mum would like massively do that for me. That makes sense. Um, which is sort of a part of the reason why I just like didn't know how to <laughs> do, do, do that. Or, yeah, or I just yeah, do any of those things really. Yeah. Um, my girlfriend would be the same. She mm. she would just sort of like um, take over, and um, so I'd never really get the chance to to yeah learn really yeah. that way. So the biggest thing was having a conversation with my mum and saying, "Hey, look, um, like I know sometimes I might look sort of like a bit like hopeless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just leave me to figure it out. 
Because totally. it's the only way I'm going to learn. Mm. Um, yeah, and so I've, I've become so much more independent mm. since then. Um, probably almost went a little bit too far the other way. Someone try and help me. I'll be like, oh, yeah, like, yeah, I got it. Like, Dude, you're yeah. dying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're just like, yeah. So I've had to learn how to like balance, like, uh, like let people in yeah. to like, let them help, um, sometimes, but you know, know when to, to take charge and just do, do things on my own. So for sure. Do you ever get, I know with, um, stutterers, they say that, you know, for, for exposure therapy and, and all sorts of things, they say that, you know, if you're around someone who's a stutterer, don't try to finish their sentence for mm. them and shit like that. Have you ever noticed that with like, if, if you start to get cloudy, people try to file you in? Yeah. There? Oh, that's exactly what would happen. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And I've always been not even like consciously mindful of that. Like I've always, if someone's like, I've, like I've got a friend who's got a stutter and I'll always let him finish his sentence. I'll never try and like mm. um, finish it for him. Mm. Um, because I think like, I just like knew how that felt like totally. in a way. Totally. Yeah. It's funny how that I'm works. only actually realizing that now as I'm saying it. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's good. And, and you, you, you know, you take your own values with it for sure. Mm. It's like, um, if someone has like a little piece of shit in their teeth or something, you want to do right by them by not making them feel embarrassed. But then at the same time, they just got a piece of shit in their teeth. Yeah. So you just got to be like, I don't know. Does that even make sense? That bizarre metaphor there. But some, I don't know. Sometimes you got to be like, hey, look, get it out. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Or in the case of the stutter up, don't say anything to allow them to actually build upon that yeah, confidence. You exactly. Know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So do you still have that sort of relationship with your mum, or? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, um, she struggles with it because see the thing with like as in she struggles with, um, just like letting me do stuff. Yeah. Because. Cool. If she would see me anxious or upset, that would trigger her anxiety. Ah, uh, totally. Yeah. And so that's why she thought, I've got to fix it. Mm. So that's where it actually all um, really came from. Yeah. All so, part of it. So So yeah. she has that thing of she wants to fix it as opposed to... Because some people, I mean, people deal with anxiety in all different sorts of ways. Yeah. You know, some people just want to be like, not today or whatever, you yeah. know. So she has that thing that she kind of wants to help you out a little bit there as well. And yeah. Yeah, cool, cool. Yeah, probably, and she doesn't really help herself enough, I would say. Yeah. As well. It's sort of like that, you know, everyone's a ref reflection of yourself sort of thing. So she sees me anxious, probably, you know, subconscious subconsciously triggers her own anxiety, mm. about, you know, how, like, or makes her think about how she's anxious, so she tries to fix it in me, mm. you know? Mm. Yeah. So, fuck. It's a perpetual spiral, spiral, hey? Yeah. We're all, we're all just such social creatures that just want to help everyone out. Yeah. <laughs> it, it ruins it. <laughs> do, do your own thing. <laughs> okay, cool. So so when did you find um, powerlifting then, man? Like, was that a, a, on the self-development path? Uh, no, not really. It, it was, so, well, I started just like going to gym when I was 15. Mm -hmm. um, but then just specifically the sport of powerlifting... Uh, in 2013, I started that. Mm. Um, yeah, and I think that's definitely a form of expression as well. Like when I sh I struggle with that verbal expression, um, like lifting weights is 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 you know expressing yourself as well. And True. So I channeled it through that. Mm. Um, yeah, and you know, and because I was good at it, obviously like like stuck with it. So yeah, yeah, like I'm, I'm you were always good. Uh, well, when, cause I, I've been strength training on my own, oh, but yeah. when I started, when I first walked into a powerlifting gym, like I already had a 155 kilo bench, which was fairly, like, fairly crazy. good. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then like, yeah, like a 170 squat and like a 220 deadlift. Man. Yeah. Fucking hell. Yeah. I'll never have those. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I can, uh, I can do, I can do some juggling, so yeah, yeah, it's yeah. all even. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We've all got our own skills. So. <laughs> yeah. She did a lot of it. All right. Well, we'll get, we'll get back into the, the mental health stuff. I love talking about that. You know, you, you and I can talk about that shit until the cows come home. Yeah. But, um, what's your, give us a bit of a rundown about who, uh, Alex is and what he's, uh, currently up to at the moment. Um, like with self development sort of stuff. No, just, 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 just anything, man. Just anything. Yeah. Um, well, a lot of it is self-development stuff, so... <laughs> yeah, so I'm, like, really into my meditation at the moment. Mm. Um, one of my friends, at the start of the year, started running, um, like, free classes. Oh, shit. Nice. Yeah, on, like, mantra-style, um, mantra-based meditation. Nice. So I've just been going there pretty much every Thursday morning, every week. Mm. Um, to just, yeah, learn 
Um, I'm, I'm, I'm like, because I've been to a few classes at like Ace Space and stuff since then. Oh yeah. And they're like real like beginner level stuff. Yeah. Which is like any, any, any of it is great. But like, I'm, I'm so glad that I jumped straight into like the 20 minute mm. ones because I feel like I'm on so much more of like a, um, like spiritual sort of journey because of that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I find, yeah, the, the effects are so much more profound when I sit and do the 20 minute ones rather than like a guided two, three five minute totally one. um yeah so i've yeah just been working on um like i've got like a um like a morning ritual that i do that's like really important to me mm. um like with like meditation and stuff like that I've got my crystals and my incense and stuff like nice. that i've got like a diary started off as like a gratitude um diary that i'll do at night but now i do it um in the morning yeah and it's more just what it like writing from the heart now like mm. I'll just write three things like it could be like something that I'm grateful for or it could be just something I feel like I need to write and then I'll meditate on that afterwards yeah okay um yeah so that so sets your intention sort of thing yeah for the meditation okay, yeah cool I like yeah. That. yeah 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 and um yeah that's that's just been like such a big thing for me lately mm. so it just like really just like sets up the rest of my day mm. um like if you're training yourself to just stop. Like you get out of bed and I, and I just stop. Like mm. I'm not just like, bang, okay, I gotta make breakfast, gotta have a shower, gotta, gotta go to work, blah, blah, mm. um, Yeah, so that's been awesome. So. Yeah, man. Um, and then apart from that, just training really hard, like I was saying before to you earlier. Um, I'm, I've got like big, big goals next year for my powerlifting. Um, I did really well at the recent nationals. Yeah, bloody what were your numbers? <laughs> I uh, hit a 335 kilo squat, a 202 and a half kilo bench, and a 320 deadlift. <laughs> Fucking so, hell, yeah. man. That's pretty big. Yeah. Oh my god. Lots of chicken and broccoli, yeah. eh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> got, got me to win. So. Yeah. <laughs> What's your diet like with, with something like that? Um, I don't know if you'd be eating all the time, wouldn't you? It's actually interesting. So lately, I've, I've, been, I've been trying this thing called the vertical diet. Oh, yeah. Which is just like lots of steak and rice and everything. I think I just wanted to change because I do have a nutritionist. Um, but after the comp, I was like, oh, you know, it's a bit of like a thing everyone's jumping on. And I was like, I'll give it a go. Okay. But I found that like that, I was eating like 1.1 kilos of rice a day. And like my body just hates carbs. Yeah, for sure. Like yeah. I'm just, yeah. So I switched back. Like I was feeling lethargic. I'd put like body fat on. Yeah. And um, I went back to my nutritionist and like after, it's literally been four days and I'm so much more mentally alert. With really? Like high fat, high protein, only carbs around training. Like my body's tightened up. Like like it's my body's like pretty like responsive to that sort of stuff. Mm. So I'll know straight away if something's working or not. So what's so so the vertical diet is that something like the ketogenic diet? No, definitely not. It's keto is so, just fat, is it? Yeah. So oh, it's, shit, this yeah. guy Stan Efforting, um, it's just, it's just like, it, I don't really know that much about like diets and stuff, so yeah. I can't really tell you, but it's like, do you know like FODMAP or something? Yeah, like I know FODMAP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty much that. Oh, okay. Yep. In terms of like, um, like eliminating foods for like, like gut health and digestion, blah, blah, blah. So it's, it's basically heaps of steak and rice and like oranges. Oh, really? No shit. And like, so you can have and like capsicum and there's, uh, and like you could have like two carrots a day. It's oh, like yeah. this like really specific stuff. Right. Two um, cats a day, that's interesting. Yeah, that like, cause, because the, the horizontal part is the micronutrients. Yeah. So you have like really specific amounts of, of these foods to fill your micronutrient goals. And then the macronutrients is the um, vertical diet. Oh, okay. The vertical part. Um, but yeah, anyway, it, that wasn't working for me. Yep. So yeah, I'm back on like high fat, high protein. Yeah. Um, yeah, which I feel so much better on. Mm. It's amazing how quickly that stuff works. Mm. I, I literally just started doing the same thing about probably three, four days ago. Mm. I found out that, well, I, didn't, I came to the conclusion that carbohydrates, because I can get easily inflamed. Like I had yeah. allergies as a kid, you know, mm. asthma yeah. from, I never had exercise induced asthma, which is mm. hilarious. Like, I, I, I was, look, this could be a, a huge bro size thing to say, but exercise is good for you. So don't let asthma get in the way, fucking hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, I had all these allergies, um, allergic to nuts, all this sort of stuff. And then yeah. this year, um, bit of that exposure sort of stuff, you know, I'm just like, fuck it. I'm just going to get rid of all of my crutches, stop taking all my medications, mm -hmm. all my asthma, all my, you know, nasal sprays and all that sort of stuff. Um, it threw me right into the deep end. So I was, 
you know, swelling up all the time, hives, breaking out. So there must, there's just something I was eating. I swear to God it was, you know. Mm. And recently I've just cut out the carbohydrates, you know. I had a, had a big day yesterday. Um, wait, what's today? Tuesday. Sunday. Had a big, um, big cake day. It was yeah. fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, worth that. Yeah. It wasn't. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, even just from slowly getting into this process, just lots and lots of fat, sunflower seeds, chia seeds, um, you know, coconut milk, all that sort of stuff. And yeah. then just, just, um, just uh, high protein as well. Mm-hmm. You feel amazing. Yeah. You're fucking incredible. Yeah, awesome. mental alertness is like the biggest thing for me with that mm. kind of fat. Yeah. But it doesn't make sense to me because I'm assuming that we would have eaten a lot of carbohydrates when we were, I don't know, a lot, a lot of people sort of think about, you know, how were we as hunter-gatherers and stuff. Yeah, but then, but then how mentally alert were we? Like, true, you know? very much. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah, true. Yeah. So, so you mentioned before that you, you've you been doing, your meditation's been more centred around spirituality and mm-hmm. all that sort of stuff. Could you just describe what that difference is? So how, how would you look at it from a spiritual sense as opposed to just like a guided self-development sort of thing? Yeah, so I guess I'm not really using meditation to like I'm not really feeling that anxious or anything throughout the day Mm. like I'm not doing it to deal with like a stressful workload um like I'm really lucky with the hours that I work and the job like I have like my dream job basically Mm. um so I'm using it to sort of go further I guess Mm. and I actually don't really know what that even means yeah yeah but it's a big sexual connotation then yeah yeah (laughs) spiritual practice (laughs) Yeah, I'm, I don't know, I'm sort of just, I don't know, I'm just like, like once or sometimes twice a day for 20 minutes, I'm just, I'm just grounding myself and um, I feel like I'm just peeling back layers mm. on myself when I do it mm. and I'm just like uncovering who's actually under there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like I'm not doing it to just, yeah, as I was saying before, just to like deal with like a stressful sort of work. Like I'm trying to just like, like get deeper within, like explore my inner world. And totally. I guess. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. And what, like, what are you finding? Um, I'm finding that, well, cause yeah, I guess all the stuff that's on top of all these condition responses that I was talking about before, like to do with like expression and stuff like that. I'm finding like, I'm so much more confident, mm. um, talking in front of like small groups and stuff like that at work. Um, Cause I'm a powerlifting coach mm. so and we've got like a beginners course uh, which has like small group classes and I'm just so much more confident and like just like so much more expressive mm. um, than I ever have been when mm. I'm talking um, which is awesome like it's like I'm just like so aware of that when I'm doing it as well yeah and I'm just like so grateful for that mm. that you know I've like because it's being me that I, you know, I've done this sort of thing. That's it. Um, and like, I've done all the work and like, I'm really at a stage now where I'm like really happy with, with, with where I'm at, but like still want to keep going. You know? Of course. Of course. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, so man, it's awesome. It's yeah. so good. It's, uh, is it, uh, is it literally not the best feeling, you know, better than MDMA, yeah. <laughs> the best feeling when you, you've got a genuine situation that's freaking you out. And just go against it. And then when it, when it's done, like even you get to that, I feel like you get to that point where you know you've beaten it. Yeah. You know, so for me, if, with public speaking again as well, I'll be doing a presentation or I'll be doing a speech. Yeah. I'll feel it coming on. There'll be like that 30 second to two minute interval where I'll be like, oh fuck, this is going to go two ways. Yeah. yeah. But then you beat it and you're like, man, I really don't want them to stop me from being up here right now. Yeah. It's happy. Because you're just, yeah, you're just so proud of yourself. Yeah. It's so nice to just like feel like genuinely like proud of your efforts. 100%. Yeah. Because a lot of people like don't, you know. Well, no, a lot of people don't even recognize, I believe, a lot of people don't even recognize that it's something that they'll be o- able to overcome. Mm. It's a thing of just, oh yeah, and by the way, I've got a fear of public speaking. Yeah. It's like, well. Yeah, and that's just me now. Yeah. That's just part of me. Exactly. The thing is, the fear is very perpetual. It's very spiraling and it can overlap and integrate into other facets of life. Mm-hmm. And if there's a system or a circumstance or an experience that makes you very fearful, it's going to start to find other little things just like that, you know, that, 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 that is going to scare you as well. Yeah. You know, even for you, just as a growing up and, you know, being the butt of a joke. And then podcasting has a bit of a fear back mm-hmm. into it as well. Yeah. Like if you didn't face this fear or if you didn't do all the self-development work, 
it's going to start to build into other things. And, yeah. and then, then you're fucking left to just your own bedroom, you know, yeah. which yeah. is the worst extreme. Yeah. Which I'm sure we've both been there before. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. for sure. Yeah. So what about the, um, so you, 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 you run courses and things at, at the other things? Oh, well? uh, yeah. So a, be- a beginner program, which is, I call it my gift. Yeah. Because that's my opportunity. Because I could easily just sort of get up there and just run through it and sort of, um, like I was talking to a friend about it, like, like how, so I've got my whiteboard and when I first started doing it, I was like, everyone's here and I'm like, oh, yep, so this and that. Yeah. Like, I'm like, and I'm not even looking at them. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and then I'm like, all right, everyone gets started and then I'll correct one on one as we go. Yeah. Um, but then I was like, okay, this is like an awesome opportunity to like really uh, practice my yeah, skills here mm. um, or to like improve like on my, uh, like not social skills, but like just coaching skills, mm. whatever. Um, so I really, I started doing things like introducing myself, asking other people's names, mm. um, just like practicing looking everyone in the eye like yeah. when I'm speaking and yeah. like, like spend like a good amount of time instructing, making sure everyone's, you know, I've got everyone's attention mm. um, and just really u- utilizing that time. Mm. Um, and yeah, and it's funny because probably the first, so the eight week programs and probably the first three, I'll shit myself. Yeah. And the last few is when I've really, really um, used it and mm. I'm just so much more confident now. Um, I've learned more about my own lifting mm. for sure um, because of like I'm teaching things at the basic, like at the base level. Yes. And then you realize, oh shit, I'm not even. Yeah, like, you think of like the effect that that's going to have in your own lifting if you affect something down here. One hundred percent. You know, rather than tweaking little like you know little toe pressure in the squat or something. Yes. Like, you know, um, little toe pressure is that a thing? That's a thing. Really? Yeah, for Whoa, sure. Fuck. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a big thing for me, mate. <laughs> yeah. What? So, um, yeah. So that's been awesome. Awesome. Yeah, the basics program has been yeah so good for me. Mm. Yeah. It's great as well, and you know. A lot of the, 99% of people, probably now a little bit more because you've just done a podcast talking about it, but 99.9% of people would have no idea that you this is a fearful thing or this is like a, a personal development thing for you. Know? They just see Alex up there, massive as fuck, and they just be like, oh, okay, he's just done this a million times, you know? Mm. But it's such a good little win for you. You yeah. just go home with a bit more of a you know spring in your step. Yeah, mm. yeah. Like I'll, the things that I'll feel the best about is I walk away and I think, oh, I spoke so clearly then mm. like, because I, I would usually mumble mm. um, because I'm trying to you know, keep my voice down. Yeah. I don't want to be heard. Um, so yeah, those are like those little wins for me. Mm. Yeah. And what about the... So do you, well, I'll get it back onto that, but I just can't get this question out of my head. We started talking about it um, a couple months ago when we caught up. We started talking about crystals, right? Mm -hmm. Because I just still want to talk about the spirituality thing. What does that mean to you? Because we got we got crystals right yeah, here, yeah, yeah. right? And uh, for me, it's like a good little thing of, of energy, nice energy in the house, and each sort of rock has its own representation of yeah. um, different forms of energy. But yeah, do you, do you hold it and things when you meditate? Or? Yeah, I've I've done a few different things. So I, I have like five that are like my favorites, mm. and I have a few other ones like bigger ones that sort of just like sit around my room. And like I know the meanings of them and everything. Like mm. I I didn't just go. Just pick them. Yeah, that's um, wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'll do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, the five, I've got like five like tumblers that, that I really like. And um, I've actually got like uh, like a bunch of, it's like a, like, oh, I don't, don't ask me what they are because I actually can't remember. Yeah, yeah. Like, but they're written up on my whiteboard at home. Yeah. Um, and they're like, because I was like, okay, I need to like put more purpose into like having these crystals mm. so i looked up i researched all like the the meanings of them and mm. like what they're supposed to do and everything and then i picked a bunch of the ones like collectively from all five that i um oh, nice. really wanted to work on yeah and i've got them on my board mm. um just like things like reaching like a higher state of consciousness mm. um uh st- like staying attuned to your purpose mm. um yeah just stuff like that yeah so, and do yeah. you do you find that they really they really help? Oh, I think it's just like having them there, and and because I've got that purpose now, and they're and they're written on my board, mm. um, I've got them. It's like a reminder, mm. like they're sitting there, and I'm like, okay, that like this is this is what I'm working on now. Mm. Um, yeah, I find they help in that way. 
Yeah, and they just, I don't know what it is, they just give a good feel. Like, totally. when I walk into my room and I see my crystals there, it's just like, yeah, I don't know, I just, yeah, I just, like, yeah. I'm totally with you, man. Yeah. I, I, I don't feel, I actually don't know the, because some people are so, but again, like, people are for against anything, you know, it's like, yeah. oh, that's a bit too woo-woo. What do you mean, man? Like, it's meditation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, and, like, yeah, you don't have to, like, get into mm. it like that. Like, there's nothing wrong with, like, using those, you know, little guided ones to like do, like if you do have a like stressful workload, like there's like, you know, nothing wrong with doing it that way, Mm. but this is just what feels right for me. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But, and even, you know, you can never underestimate the power of the placebo, you know, Mm. and even just walking into a space that, so, you know, this is how I've sort of tried to make it a meditation room, but basically it's just a room with a couple of rocks in it. (laughs) Yeah. But even because those, those, those crystals are there with the two little Buddhas, um, I don't know if we can get that in the camera. But anyway, um, you walk into the space and it just feels, it reminds you of, you know, the purpose of the room. Yeah. Um, you know, you walk in, you're like, oh, cool, like, this is a quieter space. Very ironic. But uh, it just feels a bit more correct, you know? Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. And um, I think it's just, like, one of those, like, conditioned response things as well. Like, every time you step in here, like, like that's how you feel. Um, and then that's going to... Um, like help you like with your with your meditation from there. Yeah. Totally, totally. Yeah, yeah. Like I always burn the same incense just mm. when I meditate because as soon as I smell it, that sort of trains my brain to go. Okay, like this is time to switch off now. Yeah, yeah. It's time to let go. Yeah, exactly. So what what's that incense? Uh, it's called werewolf's blood. <laughs> oh, <fuck laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like <laughs> extracted from you. <laughs> yeah, I got it. I got it from. There's like a crystal place at the end of my street. You get pretty woo woo, mate. Yeah. <laughs> and like, yeah, I was like to the lady, I was like, "What's your fa- your favorite uh, incense?" And she sort of just like went a little bit like, oh, well, "Well, it's actually like." It's got a weird name. Yeah. But it's this one, and I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. It's fucking sick. That's so, so good. Yeah. So what does that mean? Is it just like, is it the smell of it? That's... I have no idea. Yeah. I have no idea. Makes you want to kind of kill a whale off of it. There's no such thing, but... Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. classic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, man, I love it. Yeah. So what about your... Um, so your public speak... Would you call it a public speaking... Fear, or is it a fear of expression? Fear of expression. Fear of expression. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. Public speaking people... is just the top. Oh, okay. Yeah. So does it? So that's it... why this this was so hard for me because this isn't really public speaking. Like totally. I'm just talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, it's a fear of expression. Totally. For sure. Yeah. Does that does that um, get compounded upon how many people you're expressing to? Mm, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. 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 For sure. Very similar with me. I mean, I don't. I mean, I could. I don't really have a fear with the expression side of things, but it's definitely a thing. If once I start speaking to more than sort of 20, 30, 40 people, it's like, oh, okay, this is yeah. there's a fair few people here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> today. Yeah. You know, it's the, the hardest thing as well with with fears is that you just got to do it. Mm-hmm. There's no other way to get better at it than just to do it. You yeah, know? yeah, exactly. But it's also the most um, it's the most empowering thing. Mm-hmm. You know? mm. And you have any other ways that you're kind of like trying to build upon that thing you mentioned you did a podcast a week ago or something yeah a couple of weeks ago yeah, mm. I, did, yeah I did a podcast with a mate and um yeah so I did that yeah it's good. There, so that was good I got that same sort of trigger a little bit earlier I'm um, sorry a little bit later in than today yeah um yeah but I was able to overcome it and mm. sort, of, sort of push through and, and use the use my tools to um yeah to push through yeah so what are the tools what yeah the tools? so what we were talking about before with yeah. the um the like like thanking my body for um for like warning me mm. but you know like it's fine like I don't need you right now totally yeah totally yeah, yeah. that helps so, off me as well mm. and um it's tough when you're doing it like in the moment as well because you're just like I'm trying to talk and have a conversation here as well but I'm also trying to have a conversation with me yeah exactly <laughs> what's going on yeah I know <laughs> yeah I guess I'm not like saying those exact things in my head but I'm you look like, crazy, it's, man. Like, yeah, yeah. it's like a, it's a, yeah, it's just like definitely like it's, it's a thought. So for sure. Yeah. 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 Oh man, it's awesome. Oh, I appreciate you for sharing that dude. It's good. Really yeah, good. It's you. really empowering as well for, um, I mean, this is exactly what this podcast is all about. You know, mm-hmm. there are so many similarities with, you know, what you, um, oh, I don't, I don't want to say struggle with, but what your kind of like shortcomings are that you want to build upon mm-hmm. weaknesses, you know, yeah. as, as with me as well. 
Um, that's why. That's why when we had that, um, when you came on the adventure fit, yeah. I was like so keen to have a chat with you, even just one on one, you know, because I was just fucking. I was like, dude, this guy's like one hundred percent on my level with what I'm trying to do as well. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. It's the best. Um, yeah. So, yeah, what what I wanted to do with this show, and I still want to get into the powerlifting stuff as well, man. Mm-hmm. But um, kind of if you could just talk us through, because I guess some of the listeners, in fact, you know what, I'll probably run a little bit of that previous show. And then I'll talk about it in the intro as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, yeah, we did it. We did. We tried to do a show together yep. um, uh, a couple of months ago mm-hmm. um, on Adventure Fit. Yep. It was probably mostly due to the song. But <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> of all jokes, there, mate. <laughs> Fuck yeah, but yeah, take us through your mind with what was going on um, with with that podcast and um, in the lead up to it. And yeah, well, I was actually in a really, really good mental state leading into that. Mm. Um, and and it was like okay, like when Bill asked me to come on it, I was like yes, like. Next challenge, I'm going to take that on, I'm going to kill it. Yeah, I'm going to throw a pill over the fucking side of it. <laughs> yeah, and then I, just going into it, like, I just, like, had that building, uh, like, anxiety, especially because I knew it was going to be filmed. Totally. I think, like, being filmed is, like... Yeah. It's there, man. It's, yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so I had that building anxiety, but I wasn't acknowledging it, really. Mm. I was just like, nah, it's cool, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Mm. And then, yeah, like, then when I sort of went up, like into like the lobby area and then saw or out into the balcony sorry and then like saw like the cameras yeah. and everything and then <laughs> I'm just like oh fuck no oh man yeah. I'm so sorry yeah, and <laughs> then like and then um and yeah and then when you did your tribute thing because because it was like when the spotlight is on me that's where I'm just like oh and because like yeah. you're just like singing this song <laughs> about me and I'm just like oh, Shut man, I'm fuck, I'm fucking dying. <laughs> I'm dying. I'm like, don't talk to me first. <laughs> and then you guys did a quick little like joke, like intro for Hamish, and then went straight to me and asked me to like introduce myself, and it just it was like, yeah. just like game over. Yeah. And I didn't have I didn't have the tools. Yeah. At that time to to overcome that. Yeah. So, but it was something that needed to happen for sure mm. because, um, like I wouldn't be here now if I didn't if that sort of didn't happen and, well. Like that happened, and then I afterwards I thought, okay, I need to deal with this, mm. and then you know, like come up with some tools to, to deal with it. Yeah, and then I wouldn't have been able to go on, you know, my mate's podcast or come back on to this to this one. Yeah, um, yeah, that's so, awesome, man. Yeah, so it's, that's how I like to flip my perspective on that. I don't really judge myself for being like, oh fuck, you idiot, like you looked, you know, you fucked that up. Yeah, I was like, okay, that needed to happen. So like, what can I learn from this and mm. take take it on to the, you know. Mm. it's that that i think that is such a good takeaway for you know for for our listeners for 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 the mind mate podcast as well it's like it's the hardest thing in the world at that time or maybe just after that time as well but just don't judge yourself you know because Mm. we've all that that's happened to everyone a billion times you know yeah and just that that's the perfect way to do it like flip the perspective and be like okay clearly defined weakness 101 right now you know but yeah. hey great opportunity for you to now maybe start a public speaking club or you know if it's not talking if it's you know um tight spaces or something like i don't yeah. know build a cubby house i don't yeah. know do yeah. something where it's just you know because more often than not those sorts of fears at least speaking anecdotally those sorts of fears are the things that you know you wish you didn't have because you really like to do them you know, yeah. I, I mean, I love the idea of standing in front of a crowd and making everyone laugh and, you know, just having a really engaging experience with an audience. And yeah. I can, I'm sure you'd be the same with, with your expression and that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, like, love talking about, like, like lifting and programming and just, like, anything to do with powerlifting. Yeah. So, yeah, and obviously, you know, like, I need to be able to, like, speak to totally. do that. So, yeah. 100%. Sure. Yeah. So, did, we get, did you get any of those feelings after it? So, like, did you feel like a bit of a... Thing I, were you able to flip the switch pretty well into positivity? Oh, uh, yeah. It like it, well, it definitely helped. Like just like turning everything off and having a chat with you guys afterwards. That was. Cool. I was a little bit down like afterwards. Yeah. Um. But then I yeah I flip it pretty quickly. Yeah, that's yeah. good. That's power. That's probably yeah. something that I wish I could have done back then. That's been that's been one of the biggest things with my uh with my um with my counselor as well. Oh yeah. Just plus learning how to change your perspective. Mm. On things like constantly, mm. you know, nothing, none of these things actually exist. Like whether they're one thing or the other, like you know, you could feel like I, I felt down about that, 
and then I flipped my perspective and suddenly I felt positive about that. Yeah. Like, which one was real? Totally. No. Yeah. Like, so true. Yeah. Yeah. It's a scary, that's a scary, scary road, man. Yeah. When you start thinking about the fact that, you know, there are all different forms of reality based on perspective. And yeah. Like, I've actually, so I had change your perspective written up on my whiteboard. I have a bunch of like different things that I think are helpful to mm. me, but I recently changed it to choose your perspective. Oh, uh, yeah, that's good. Because like, you can. You totally like, can. Yeah. Yeah. Does that help in the training sense as well? Yeah. Like, does it help when you're, I don't know, I'm sure you would come to a training session feeling flat. Yeah. You know, are you able to switch that? Uh, well, it'll more help with, say, if I have, like, like a bad session, um, like I, like, say, if I miss a lift or it, or, like, things were just um, feeling shit or whatever, mm. I'll be like, okay, what can I, let's flip it, what can I learn from this? Like, mm. you know, like my, you know, my body's not, you know, functioning, you know, as a system properly. Like mm. what's like, where can I identify the weakness? And then when I identify that, I'm like, oh, cool. That was awesome. Like now, oh, shit. now I'm going to be able to move forward and be even stronger from that. Mm. Even though that one session was, was shit, I like take it as a opportunity to, to learn mm. and, and get better. Man, that, that would have to be a very, very good tool in your wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. How much has that train changed your, uh, athletic performance yeah well it's hugely yeah yeah especially like on um on comp day using this this sort of stuff mm. um yeah because it's because that's because that was the thing like i'd have like really good training uh preparations um but then i'd get to comp day and that fear of expression would come in not really on the platform but just socially like True. being in a room full of powerlifters and everything and i was so taken away by that yeah um so just like learning how to i guess so this is probably more like the meditation like bringing it back sort of thing rather yeah. than flipping your perspective um but like uh, to me that all that stuff is yeah, it's, all it's, it's all like tied in for me totally um yeah just like learning how to bring it back and like be the observer and stuff yeah. like that so and i guess with in terms of like on comp day with flipping your perspective like I would always, I'm always like judging like how people are like, like looking at me or like, you know, <laughs> just like the, con like the, uh, or not looking at me, but just like the conversations I'm having with people. And then I would sort of flip it and think, well, actually they're probably feeling like it's pretty common for like powerlifters to feel like pretty like, you know, have that social awkwardness. Yeah. Um, like a lot of us get into it for the, like the same sort of reason. Oh, really? So I, I'm, I'm reading like their like how closed off they are as like, oh, they don't want to talk to me. As, mm. But then I flip it and I'm like, actually, they're probably just like feeling just the same as me. 100%. We're all so insecure all the time. Yeah. yeah. We yeah, all just yeah, want to survive. Yeah. We all just want to fucking eat and survive. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and we're just like freaking out about how we can get those those things, you yeah. know? That's funny, man. The first time I met you was at the powerlifting comp um, at uh, the Melbourne Exhibition Centre. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, fuck, this guy's big. And I was like, hey, bro, like, how's it going? We had like a friendly chat. But I was like, I remember having a thought of like, Man, if I say the wrong thing, is he going to beat the fuck out of me? <laughs> like, obviously not as yeah, in, like, yeah, he genuinely yeah. would. Yeah. But I remember, like, it's funny, you have that thing, you have on, on your side, it's kind of like, shit, you know, do I look closed off right now, yada, yada, yada. And then on my side, I'm like, this guy's a hell of a lot bigger than I am. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Just classic insecurities. Yeah, it's hilarious. Sure. Yeah. I probably should work on my rig a little bit more. <laughs> um, so what, okay, so let's move on to the powerlifting stuff, man, because mm -hmm. this is just equally fascinating for me, you know. Um, we spoke to um, Eddie... Ed Cohen. Ed Cohen, yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> He's going to hate Great. you for everyone <laughs> that. Greatest of all time. But, you know, <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Uh, yeah. <laughs> George W. <laughs> that's just... Roll Merck. Oh, God, that's yeah. just shocking. Yeah. Ed Cohen. We spoke to Ed Cohen um, on that day, actually, I think, the day that I met you. Uh -huh. And he spoke about the fact that, like, his greatest... I guess he, what he used that really changed his training up the most was he would spend a whole summer just um, focusing on like a specific accessory or he would just do accessory based training. If he had a weakness, he would do like a you know, heavy as deadlift and he, he would look back on it, he'd speak to his coach and maybe it was his lower back that was the weaker part and then he would just pump the shit out of his lower back and then yeah. eventually he would just keep building. Um, what, what's something that you do? Because I, I imagine that you would reach a plateau of strength and then it would just be very, very hard to overcome that. What, what's your What's your take on that? Yeah, so it's all about being like technically proficient, mm -hmm. like at that level. That's the thing. Like, if you have good programming, uh, like well structured programming, like well thought out, 
the only thing standing in your way there is like is technique in my opinion mm. um, like if you know if you're working hard and you're eating properly all that sort of stuff um, so that's how I'm identifying my weaknesses so I think yeah Ed I listened to that podcast yeah and he was sort of saying that he sort of tar- and I've listened to a bunch of stuff from Ed Cohen as well mm. and he sort of targets his weaknesses through different exercises whereas I will target my weaknesses and sort of try and just improve the movement. Yep. So I might, so say, um, I've got like whatever sort of weakness, like in my squat, I will, I'll sort of like rather than doing like a front squat or some sort of variant to help with that, mm. I'll I'll just try and like improve the actual movement of my squat, like whether it's like okay. whether I'm going into like an anterior pelvic tilt, yeah, like I'll try and improve my bracing, like I'll just actually. Just try and squat better. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. But obviously, you have to you 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 have to like scale it back and yeah. like work on those things and maybe like do a few like activation drills to sort of just like like improve like your uh, proprioceptiveness to, of course. Like, to that area. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so run us through like a, a, a typical session and like how long was so you, you you're not training today? You train today? Yeah, I'll train a bit later, yeah. A little bit okay. Yeah. So, including all of the, you know, proprioceptiveness, the warm-ups, the drills, and, and then, you know, the actual session itself, you know, what does that look like for you? Um, yeah, so first thing I do, um, yeah, so I start with, like, my, like, sort of mobility um, sort of stuff. I always start with, um, like, extension stuff for the spine. Okay. Because, like, nice. even, like, look at me now, like, yeah. I'm sort of, like... Uh, like flexing forward totally. like I do all like a bunch of like cervical stuff mm. um, <clears throat> yeah like all through my thoracic lumbar just like taking everything into extension mm. um, and then I sort of build from there like do mostly just like like core and, and glute like activation stuff yep um, any other stuff like any other activation um, drills I might do like will be dependent on like if something's not feeling that great that mm. day and I'll be like, okay, if something's lacking here, okay, I'll do that. Mm. But the other stuff, like the core and the glute stuff are like staples. Okay. Um, and then that'll take about 20 minutes and then I'll get into my session. Sessions usually take around two hours. Um, and it depends what on phase, what phase of training I'm in. Like usually it'll be like uh, either a squat day or a bench day or a deadlift day. Mm. But recently, because I've just come out of um, a comp, Mm. I'm doing fairly like non, uh, non-specific sort of training. Um, so like I'll do my bench with like my feet up in the air and stuff oh, yeah. like that. Um, and um, working on conditioning as well. So like manipulating like the rest times. Oh yeah, nice. Yeah. So like yesterday I did like pause squats, um, like bench press and like deficit conventional deadlifts. Yeah. And then did I get all the uh, huh? No, <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, no, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A couple times a week. Yeah, I've got to do like arms and shoulders. And good. Stuff like yeah, that. yeah. Got to. Yeah. <laughs> you look good, man. <laughs> For sure. Um, yeah. So yeah, that was my training day yesterday, and then mm. so I, I've my coach because so I've got a coach, so he gives me like a percentage to work with mm-hmm. of my one rep max, mm-hmm. and then he'll give me a total amount of reps to hit, and then he'll say, okay, you got to hit. 24 reps at 70% in sets of three to six with uh, 90 seconds of rest in between. Okay. So that's like my conditioning um, sort of stuff at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. And when does that come into play? Is that just after a competition? Because yeah, I'm assuming um, that you want to focus on strength in the lead up or something. Or... Yeah, 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 yeah. So like, so the further out from competition you are, um, the more um, non-specific training you'll do. Yeah. Um, so for anyone that doesn't know, the power thing is like the squat, the bench press and the deadlift. Mm-hmm. Um, so non-specific training will just be like different variants of those lifts. Like yeah. I'll do like a, like a high bar squat and like a front squat and um, yeah, a conventional deadlift instead of sumo deadlift. Mm. Uh, yeah. That's cool, man. Yeah. And, and then it just sort of like all sort of like tapers in as, as, as we get closer to the comp, like the weights get heavier, the reps get lower. Mm. Uh, yeah. And so where do you stand? Like, you know, how competitive are you and what, what are your goals um, for, for the next couple of months? Um, I'm number ten in the world. Yeah, the moment. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. knew, I knew that. Too. Yeah. <laughs> so just, just making everyone. Sure Thanks for bringing it up, though. Yeah. I don't mind saying that. For sure, <laughs> for sure, dude. Express yeah. yourself. <laughs> yeah. So number two in Australia, though. So yeah, we've got Pat Morrison, who's number one, mm. who's just like a fucking gun. Yeah. Um. 
Yeah, so my goal is to win the Arnold Classic mm. in March, which is like an extremely uh, competitive comp. Mm. Last couple of years doing the Arnold Classic, um, well, it's just the timing of the year. Like it's, so it's in March. Yeah. And leading up to that, like I've gone to like Strawberry Fields Festival, <laughs> Rainbow, Rainbow Surf. <laughs> Like I Spirituality. Have, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Exploring my, my consciousness. Yeah. Um, yeah, for like five days straight. Bring your crystals. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so that's not great for the body. True. Yeah. So now, but I, I've just been making that switch this year to like, so I, I didn't do that well at the arms this year. And my coach sort of said to me, he's just like, look, if you actually want to be good, you gotta stop fucking around. Like I, in my head, I was like, yeah, I'm trying to have this balance between like I've got all these friends who like DJs and stuff, and they're like into partying, and like it's so refreshing to go hang out with that. For sure, because it's so different. Um, but like I really want this now. You mm. know? Like I really, I really want to be the best. Mm. So, and you can see it in the way you talk, man. Yeah, it's good. It's so good. I'm just trying to make all those like little decisions, um, like you know, that will like help, help like lead to that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to strawberry fields. Oh no! Or rainbow this year. Consciousness so, will be yeah, coming down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're gonna have to meditate twice a day now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So that's so that's yeah. That's what I feel like I have to do to to win this comp, and mm. it's gonna be super competitive mm. as well. Um, people always drop out, but the people that are on the list well, that I've heard are coming uh, at the moment. Like I think like the number two 90 kilo lifter in the world is coming. So. Yeah. So that's your weight categories. Oh, uh, so th for the Arnold Classic, they have slightly different oh. um, categories. So it's yeah. under eighties, under ninety fives, which is mine, yeah. and then one ten, one twenty five, and then super heavy. Yeah. But usually in powerlifting, there's like under 56, 60, 67 and a half, seventy five, and yeah, it just goes yeah. on and on, on and on and on, like all the way up. Mm. Um. So they're trying to, because uh, the competition is so watered down, mm. so they're trying to like increase the level of competition by having less weight. That makes sense, yeah. And so the Arnold Classic is a competitive competition yes. as well. Yeah. Because yeah. I would have thought that... It's it's the most competitive competition. Is it really? Yeah. Okay, so do you have a in, world in or a... Um, yeah, so the, the federation I compete in usually, GPC, we do have a world, but the competition is so good in Australia, there's just no... Like, no one... Because it's not a professional sport, yeah. the best aren't going to worlds. Like, it's in Hungary this year. Yeah. It's probably just gonna be a bunch of Hungarians. <laughs> True. And like, you know, neighboring countries. You Hungry know. Hungarians, yeah. 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 Okay. So, like, I, that's just not something I would even think of doing. Mm. And it'd be cool because uh, I assume, I, I imagine that Arnie'd be there and. Yeah, yeah, Arnie's always there. Yeah, that's mad. Yeah. Yeah. Beat it for him. Huh? That'd yeah. be sick. Yeah. <laughs> Great, man. Cool. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Is, uh, I'm pretty happy with that. That was yeah, awesome, man. Happy with that. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for giving me the opportunity. So. Yeah, dude, I fucking loved it. Yeah, it was so good. We'll have to get you back on the show again, man. Yeah. Um, as always, love it. We can sure. go into all different sorts of things for sure. Is there anything you want to plug? Um, oh, just my know? just my Instagram, I guess. Mm. Alex, Alex Deacon, D E K E N P L. Definitely. Um, I am my gym, PTC South Melbourne. Mm. So. For sure. Yeah. You guys do a lot of good stuff down there, and you know, if you got a lot of our listeners are in Melbourne as well, so if you guys are ever interested in, um, you know, getting into powerlifting as well, which is something that I'd love to get into, um, you know, you can head down there, and you guys do one on ones and PTs and things. Yeah, we have heaps of different options. So yeah, yeah, awesome, yeah, dude. Cool. Thank you so much, man. Thanks, man. Awesome. And that's a wrap. The pale blue dot.